Hi guys, welcome to another video. My name is Emmanuel and uh, today we're going to learn about a very important topic. We've actually used it but probably didn't know. That's closures. So today we're going to see how to use it and some of the benefits and you know the likes. And if you haven't already, please just take a second, just a teeny second and click the subscribe button, turn on notification just so you can get notified on new videos. All right, so let's jump right in. So create a new project and I'm currently using the playground. The first thing I want us to know is that closures and functions are the same thing. Now the only difference is, is the syntax. Now I'm going to show you what a function looks like in case you've forgotten and we're going to see how to convert a function to a closure. So let's create a function to add two numbers. So I'm going to call this add. It's going to take two parameters. Um, let's say num1 as an integer. And the second one is num2 as uh -oh, an integer as well. Now this is going to return an integer also. All right. So this is a typical function. And the function is going to do what? Return num1 plus num2. Simple enough. So we can actually just print out our addition. So say add and pass in two numbers. Let's say uh, 5 and 10. What is the answer? All right, 15. Now that works very well. So let's see how this can be converted to a closure. So what we're going to do is right here, we're going to create a closure. Now, we can actually assign this to a constant or a variable, depending. So I'm going to create a constant called add. All right. Now, this is going to be equal to a curly brace open and close. And I'm going to pass in two parameters. How do we do that? Open your brackets. Pass in your num1 as an integer, and secondly, your num2 as an integer. Now, this is going to return an integer as well. Next, we need to use a keyword in and simply say return num1 plus num2. All right, now we can actually just comment this guy out and see if it does the same thing. So we can run this program. And of course, we need to remove this or add a label, whichever one we please or choose. I'm just going to remove this and run it. 15. And if you think it was staged, let's actually change the value 50. And this should return what? 60, right? Works well. So this is a closure. It does the same thing as a function, just a different syntax. Now, we can actually modify this to act in different other ways, and we're going to see how that is done now. So one way we can actually rewrite this is to take all of these out of here and then just pass it here to simply say the add variable should be of this type. So we're just going to get rid of this label and this as well. And right here, we can simply just pass in the names of the um, variable or the label of the variable. So here we can say num1 right in here and num2. And the same way we have access to the num1 and num2 values. So we can run this and we're going to get the same output. Now another thing we can do is we can actually choose to remove this and access the values by using the dollar sign and the index of the value of the parameter. So I'm going to say zero just to get the first index of the first parameter and index one to get the second one. All right. And we're not going to need the in any longer. You can simply just return um, dollar sign zero plus dollar sign one. And if we run this, we will get the same value. All right. How cool is that? Now, the next thing I want to show you about closures is you can actually add closures to an array or a dictionary. And to do that, we're going to say let, so we're going to create a, an array, and we're going to say let um, funks equal, it's going to create an array, and then we're going to pass in closures. So I can simply pass in add right here like that. And you can actually add more closures to your array. And if we hold down option and click on the func, you can see that the type is an array of closure that accepts two integers and returns one integer. 
right? Now we can actually add more, but the thing is they have to be of the same type, right? It's very important. So if we were to create another one and say maybe sub, and here we're gonna pass in a minus, and if we go ahead to add a sub here, this is gonna work fine. But if we decided to change the um, type of any of them, so let's say we change this to um, a double, and uh, a double like this, Now this is going to throw an error because the types don't match. So this is int. Okay, so yeah, it's just basically saying that they don't match. So this is an int, int returning an int, while the other one is double, double returning double. So how do you fix that? Simply pass in closure of the same type or expect the same parameter and all of those things. All right, so we can actually use this basically the same way we have this one being used. I can actually um, say let add func, just have a different name, and this is going to be funks, and we're getting the first index because we know that this returns uh, closure to perform addition. All right. So what I'm going to do is say add func, and I'm going to pass in two values, one and two. I expect that the answer should be three all right so i'm going to run this and we should see three right here all right so it works well now we can actually try the same thing but this time we're going to do for subtraction so let's copy this and over here we're going to do funks one because we know that one index one is for subtraction and pass in sub here then we're going to use sub func and pass in um let's say five and three. So we expect that the output should be two, and that's exactly what it is. So you can see that we've actually used uh, past closures in um, an array. You can decide to do the same thing to a dictionary. So if we wanted to convert this to a dictionary, you can simply just say, uh, pass in a string, and say add like this, and say sub like this, and it's still gonna work fine. And we can actually access this by passing in add, and pass in sub, and everything should work as expected. All right, what's the problem? Yes, yeah, so this, since this is a dictionary, you have to force this or save and wrap just so that you're sure that the value exists. And you can see we have three, we have two. All right, how cool is that? Now the next thing we're gonna see is how to pass a closure as a parameter to a function. Now, yes, that is possible. So let's see how that is done. I'm going to just get rid of all of these for now. And I'm going to create a function. And this function is going to take in two parameters. And we can simply just call it, uh, let's call it add. I don't know why I always use add. So um, we're going to pass in num1. This is going to be of type int. And I'm going to pass in num2 as type int as well. But this time, it's going to take a completion or a closure, right? and uh, as the third argument. So what I'm gonna do is say uh, result. So I'm gonna call this result, and this is gonna be a closure that passes in, um, let's say two, let's say two um, results. So the addition and the subtraction. So let's basically just change this to um, operation or opera, All right? That's cool. Now we're not gonna be returning anything, or the closure isn't gonna be returning anything. So, yep, we have our function. So the next thing we're gonna do is to actually use our closure from within this function. So to do that, as we've been doing, we're gonna say results, which is the name of the closure. I'm gonna pass in two parameters. The first one I wanna pass in is the addition of the two numbers that were passed in. So I'm gonna say let um, add be equal to num1 plus num2. Then the second one is going to be subtract, all right? And this is going to be minus, all right? Now, we're going to call the closure, and we're going to pass in the addition as the first um, value, and um, subtraction as the second. So this is going to execute our closure. Now, how do we call this function? 
Very simple. All we need to do is say Opera, nope, not Operator, Opera, like that, and you can see right here, it expects the num1, we're going to pass in 10, num2, we're going to pass in um, 5, I'll see something different, 60, 61, I don't know, 11. Now for the result, this is where we're going to pass in our closure. So just press enter, you can see our closure is already created, like that, and this as you know from here is our addition so you can simply just pass in add or addition if you want and the second one is going to be subtraction just like that and at this point we can actually just print the addition is what is the addition my man addition we're going to do the same thing for subtraction awesome so let's go ahead and run this and see if it works fine. Beautiful. So um, 10 plus 11 is 21. 10 minus 11 is minus 1. Right. So you can see that we actually passed in a closure to our function. And if you notice something, it actually removed this um, result label and is actually known as a trailing closure. So the thing is, rather than having this as um, like passing the label like this, and then having your um, closure created, like addition and everything written all over here, you can actually just uh, sort of like shorthand it to just open your closure like that and just get rid of the label, right? So it's just something that is possible in case you want it. All right, so now we understand how to pass a closure into a function. There's another thing closures can do, and that is to return closure. You can return a closure out of a closure or function. All right. So that's what we're going to be demonstrating right now. All right. Now we're going to create a function and this function, we can call this, um, what should we call this? Say level, right? Level or game. I don't know. Let's call it game. And inside our game, we're going to have something called, so basically what we want to do is Whenever you get to the next level, we want to increase the multiplier or difficulty, all right? So right here, we're going to have a variable that holds or keeps track of the difficulty level. So I'm going to say var, and I'm going to call this multiplier, if I got the spelling, and initially it's going to be zero. So it's zero from the beginning. Now, we're going to create a closure right here, and this closure is going to increase the value of the multiplier. So what I'm going to do is say let, and we're going to call this increase for, I don't know what reason, and this is going to be a closure, as you know, and this closure is not going to be accepting any arguments, but it's going to return an integer, right? And the integer is going to be returning is our multiplier plus one. So how do we do that? We're simply going to say um, return multiplier plus equals one. And actually we need to add an in right here. And we need to move this guy to the next line and say return multiplier. So basically what we're doing here is we're saying increase the value of multiplier by one and then return the value out of this increase function. Now, right here, we want to return our closure out of this function. Right, that's what we're trying to demonstrate. So right here, what I'm going to do is say return, and we're going to be returning a value of type or a closure of type. Um, doesn't take any arguments, and it's going to return an int. So this is the type of variable that we're going to be returning from this function. So how do we do that? We simply just say return and increase, which is the name of the closure. All right, and everything looks very pretty. Very good. Now, how do we use this? And I can go ahead and create a new, um, uh, what do we call this? A new variable or a constant rather. I'm going to call this game one. And this is because I want to demonstrate something else. So now this is going to be game. So we're simply going to create or call the function game, which is going to return a closure, right? that is assigned to game one. Now, if I execute the function game one, 
like that. Remember, it's a closure. If I run this, you're going to see that the value of game one is one. Let's actually go ahead and print this so it goes to the console. So I'm going to say print and run this again. And you're going to see game one, right? Now that's good. Now this brings us to the second thing I'd like to, or the second, uh, I don't know, second thing I wanted to point out about um, closures. They actually capture variables in their surrounding or environment context. What I mean is, now we have multiplier here and the value is zero, right? Now when we executed this increase function, which is from here, or this increase um, closure from here, game one and executing this, it actually increased the value of the multiplier, right? Now, if I were to run this exact line of code again, what do you think is gonna happen? I'm sure you guessed right. It, the new value is two. This is because it took the value of, it took everything, all of the variables within this context and sort of like created a copy of that. So whenever you um, perform operations or whatever calculations and manipulations within this particular context or um, closure, it's only going to be affected there. Now, this is what I mean. If I went ahead to create a second one, game two, and we're creating another closure or getting another closure, if I were to run this and print the value of game two instead, can you guess? I'm sure you guessed right. So the value or the answer or result, whatever, is one. Now this is because this is a, a separate or a different closure, all right? So just keep that in mind. Whenever you make modifications within this, it's gonna affect the variables in that context, all right? So uh, that's basically the next thing I wanted to talk to you about. And don't get me wrong, closures are very powerful, very powerful. We've used them in different areas of our code and we're gonna use them subsequently so um, there's actually something else you can do with closures that I actually do in my project. So you can actually use closures to send information from one view control to another, right? Now I'm gonna leave that to you, try and figure it out. If you have any problems, then feel free to leave a comment and we can tackle it together, right? Uh, meanwhile, uh, this actually brings us to the end of this video. And uh, if you have any questions, again, go ahead put it down there in the comment section and I will explain as best I can. Meanwhile, if you haven't subscribed already, please just take a second again, click on the subscribe button and see you guys in the next video. Yeah!